John, if you had to um, write out the qualifications and the criteria that from your experience, from your perspective, uh, that would enable or permit uh, a therapist to function as a primary care, uh, what would they be? Yeah, so I think um, going back to the, the red and yellow flags, you've, you've got to know what that, that looks like, what that smells like, what that sounds like in a subjective history. Um, you've got to be, you know, the therapist has to be really good to go, uh-oh, I've got a flag here and I need to investigate that, right? Because the question is, are they safe for physical therapy? And if they are safe, can I move them? You know, the secondary thing is, this is, is this a dominant inflammatory process, for example? Um, do they need medicine? Do they need movement? What do they need? So I think those are the, those are kind of the baseline starter questions um, or the baseline requisites, I think, for, for physical therapists, because we're talking about safety. Um, you know, one thing on that vein I had to learn, and I'll, I'll send a plug out to him, Major Brian Pickens, who, who runs the Army's uh, fellowship, a um, fellowship. It was Lieutenant Pickens and, and Captain Miller at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. I traditionally thought that stress injuries weren't a thing. Uh, I heard a you know, stress fracture because you just don't see them in the civilian world. I had to quickly learn not only they're a thing, but I had to, you know, go to go to my the officer, you know, lieutenant who's actually got less rank than I do, but a lot more education. And hey, listen, train me up on this thing. So um, I could see instances depending on the setting for your physical therapist in primary care. Um, you know, PTs in the primary care care setting. You know, I think safety is paramount. That would be my concern. Are therapists really familiar with yellow and red flags when they hear them or they see them? And do they they go down that line before they think about, hey, let me just go into an evaluation because it simply may not be appropriate to, to do a, a physical therapy evaluation. Um, the other piece, and I'll tell on myself here, is that, <clears throat> excuse me, depending on the settings, there may be pathologies. Uh, the physical therapist might not be familiar familiar with so i'll give you an example of myself when i got into the army um i'd heard about you know stress fractures or stress injuries and frankly i didn't think they were really a thing because if if i saw them if i saw them i you know i didn't and they saw me right but in the military because of, of, of the heavy things we do especially in the trainee population we do have a lot of stress injuries so um Lieutenant Pickens, first Lieutenant Pickens, I'm Major Pickens, who runs the AMP Fellowship for the Army, um, had, had to train me and teach me. So I would say that's also an example of, hey, listen, being open as a therapist in this setting because uh, you have to be on top of your game and willing to listen to other therapists that may have, uh, you know, experiences that you don't. Um, and I think, I don't know if I mentioned before, we just have a really close relationship with the primary care providers. So much so, in my last setting at Fort Benning, um, there were so many musculoskeletal pinches for sick call that primary care couldn't handle it. They were, you know, my, my PTs were seeing up to a hundred patients a day between three therapists. Mm -hmm. um, and the question is, you know, how do you give effective healthcare, musculoskeletal healthcare? So I basically said, Hey, this is what we're going to do. We're going to triage these patients. And if we think they, they're really primary care patients, we'll send them over to them. But if not, you'll see them and they just had a really, really good relationship and they could walk over to the door of the, of the physician and go, look, this, this, is, this is a flag or this is something I'm concerned about and they're not appropriate for therapy and, and they could be addressed immediately. So I guess I'm speaking to the relationship of, of a primary care physician and physical therapist. It would have to be very close and there would basically have to know, be no communication barriers um, so we can take care of patients as best as possible. Yeah. Hear the entire episode for free on iTunes, Spotify, other favorite podcast players, or go to mechanicalcareforum.com.